Before I record, we're going to do the Let's get going. So today's Tanya actually, you know, the, we learn Tanya every day, a little portion every day, divided by the days of the year. The whole Tanya is divided up to like around 365 days. So today's Tanya portion is just like one of the, okay, the biggest secrets or the uh, the, the explanation of why this whole world and how this whole was, was created and what we're uh, gearing towards. So I decided today's Tanya, we're just going to, we're going to have to learn it. It's, it's a continuation of what we've been learning in the last few weeks. It's chapter 36. I did post on the chat the pages that I'm taking today's lesson from. Um, I, the today's, the, the Tanya is at the top of the page that of what I posted in Hebrew. And then on the bottom of the page is the explanations of Rabbi Chaim Miller. So uh, you can always go back after this class also and look at it, or while I'm speaking, you can look at it because it's very beautiful things. And if you have questions on it, you can ask me. So the, the, what, it's, what it's explaining over here is, you know, God created the world, created the world, what for? He could have created a, a not such a physical um, world where God is so concealed and we don't see God. He could have created a world of just angels, spiritual beings, spiritual worlds, and where God is more revealed and more felt. And it's more, could have been much more of an enjoyable experience for everybody all around, possibly. Why why be in the world where it's dark and difficult and you know we see evil and we see concealments? So in general, the Tanya explains, Althreb and Tanya explains that if God created just spiritual worlds, Really, every every any type of world, any type of existing creation being, is already a concealment of God's light. God's oneness fills the whole right, the whole existence. And when there's a separate entity created, even if it's a spiritual entity, it's a separate um, entity that, that that's created that's distant. And there has to be some sort of concealment of godliness so that the the spiritual entity can feel. Uh, and exist, can feel its existence and feel and actually exist. So all all the spiritual worlds that were created are downgrades of God's light or in God's revelation. So and in order to create this physical world where there's total darkness and total physicality of substances that we can feel and touch and see and experience that we don't see God at all in them, for that there had to be a huge downgrade, level to level of God being more God concealing himself more and more and more, called in Hebrew tzimtzum, but God hiding and hiding and hiding and hiding and hiding more and more and more <laughs> downgrades of revelations in each of these spiritual worlds or as many entities. And then finally, we this we're taught in Hasidus and Kabbalah, our world that we live in, this physical world, is the lowest of the low. There is no lower world and no more lower <laughs> concealment than our world that we're living in. That's why everything in this world could appear to be like there's no God at all and no, and that evil is stronger and more powerful and it overpowers godliness. Even if we did find God, it seems like evil has more strength and power and might and more is in charge and in control than God. <laughs> so that's, so, so what's the whole point? Um, the whole point was, is God chose, he had, he had a desire, it says in Kabbalah and Hasidus, a desire to be experienced and revealed in this physical world where he's completely hidden and have us experience godliness within a physical world. And God gets the biggest pleasure from this kind of, um, this kind of um, experience. And why God ex experiences pleasure? You can't explain pleasure, right? Why you like um, pink and not orange, you know, that's, your desire or your pleasure, your innate sense. So we can't ask questions and say, you know, give a rational explanation. And in general, if we're trying to reach God just through our rational or through our understanding of our brain, it, our brain is very limited. And it's, a, 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 it's an impediment in a way, a concealment, unless we're using our mind to learn Torah because Torah is God's wisdom and it's God's will. And through learning Torah, we can actually understand God in a way that physical human beings with a regular brain cannot understand God because God is beyond the physical creation that he created. <laughs> so our 
our, 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 our minds are limited, but if we use our minds as a vehicle to understand what God is, is helping us find and understand uh, in Torah and through Torah mitzvahs, then we can come to an appreciation and understanding of God's will and God's wisdom. Okay. And it, it says God actually put himself into the Torah. Anochi, he, he put him, his own essence, his own essential essence into Torah. So there is the external part of Torah, which is the revealed parts of Torah, and then there's the inner dimensions of Torah. So the external parts of Torah, all the laws and the rules and the stories and the and the explanations and the insights, right, that that are are we can appreciate that we've been given um you know from generation to generation written down revealed parts that were and we're understanding them the more we understand the more we understand god will and wisdom then there's a deeper dimension of torah which is the inner essence more of the teachings which is hasidus and hasidus wasn't totally totally revealed to everybody only to certain you know individuals but now in our generation it's revealed to everybody and we all can access it and this is one of the things that we learn here now, Hasidus is, is kind of like the soul of Torah compared to the body of Torah. Okay, now the Torah in general is revealing godliness, so it's hard to, it's like we said, it's hard to absorb godliness, but it says though, when God gave the Torah in Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, God enabled us to be able to receive um, awarenesses and understanding of God in our brain because he merged, God merged spirituality and physicality. So he made it possible for the physical world to actually absorb godliness and understand godliness. And it was, it was that was the gift of the Torah, the giving of the Torah. Till then, if you were in a, in a, spir a spirit, you could either spiritually connect maybe to God, but not with the physical world. So here now in our physical brains and with physical objects, we can view holiness into physicality. And we can connect to God with physicality. Not only that, it's God gets the most pleasure of connecting to us through the physical. So our connection is specifically dealing with the physical world is what's giving God pleasure. So this idea, this notion of wanting to escape physicality and become more spiritual and detached from the world is not a is not a Jewish concept. Okay, it's it's something. It's kind of like it's 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 counterintuitive. It seems like physical conceals God. So why would we want to be into physical? We want to escape physical. It's, it's hiding God. But the whole point is, is no, the physical, yes, if you're just using physical for the sake of being physical and enjoying the physical for no other reason than just be, being, you know, connecting to the physical aspect of it, then yeah, it is an impediment and it is a concealment. But if we're in the, in the physical, finding God in the experience and connecting to God through the experience the, the physical is being elevated to something holy, and we're making physicality holy. The best way to do it is, is you know, through a mitzvah, to using the physicality through a mitzvah. But we can also connect to God just by, by, by just being in the physical world, being in a physical body, and thinking about God at that moment. We're also <laughs> connecting to God. And it's not, it's not like we even have to have a physical... Um, object in order to connect we could connect just in our in our thoughts at every moment and it's we can experience godliness at every second with having the the understanding of godliness and these understandings and insights of godliness are explained in Hasidus and um the more we learn Hasidus the more our whole being our body itself is a vessel and a vehicle of seeing godliness in every moment and that's the really the goal to be able to see the miracles in every moment to, to see the divine providence in every moment to be able to see that god is guiding us and taking care of us and and directing us and doing for us and and he's working through us and we're vehicles of godliness in this world but to experience that that we're just being who we are and experience godliness by being who we are it takes the learning of Hasidus. Because that brings us to consciousness and an awareness of these ideas. It's not just like, poof, we do need that, we do need that consciousness and that connection of, of, of our understanding of God. And but Hasidus brings us to that place where we can at every moment be connected at any time, even if we're not actually doing something. And um it, and we're just being with God at this moment. So so Hasidus is is is, is extremely important. It's um it says also when when um, when the Jews received the Torah, 
the revelations were so high and so grand and so great that actually their their the their souls left their bodies. They couldn't they couldn't handle it in a body. These revelations of God were just too much for them to handle. So it says that God gave them the do the tal of the of the resurrection of the dead. So what the, and it's the, it's what is this do? So the Lubavitcher actually explains that this do is these insights of Hasidus that are deeply understood and explained in the times that we're in now. The, the deeper we delve into these secrets of Torah that Hasidus teaches us, and we understand godliness with these, the, this is the do of, 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 of connecting to God's essence. It's, and it's what enlivens us and connects us in an even deeper level. But that's, that's a separate class. Actually, I think it might be on my YouTube channel, um, Beis Chana YouTube. You can, if you go to Beis Chana on YouTube, um, you look for the icon that has a woman that looks like me. It's me about ten years ago. <laughs> then, um, <laughs> then you'll see one of those classes. I'm not sure which. I have a bunch of classes posted there. In any event, okay. So today's Tanya is is mentioning this, um, what I just said. Um, all, all this learning that we're doing with the Hasidus is going to make it possible to have the revelations of the times of Mashiach, as so he talks about here, where God will not be concealed. We'll be able to see God within the physical. The physical will not be an obstacle to seeing God. It's actually we'll be able to see God within every physical thing that's going on. The, the physical world will be not a concealment of God. It will be a, a way of us understanding God better. So it's not just the physical objects. It's time physical time, physical experiences, physical pace, places. So if like, if somebody comes to us and we have an experience that's uh, painful or upsetting, by, with learning Hasidus, we are able to gain insights that we don't see the experience as something so um, uh, separate from God. We see it as something that God is doing for us and with us. So when we have these insights and understanding of Hasidus, the experience no longer creates that sense of distance, separation, uh, suffering. Yeah, it's, we can see maybe it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge. It takes an effort for us to see godliness in it. It takes uh, work to actually see through the veil. But once we see through the veil with the teachings of Hasidus and we change our perspective and we have the shift in our mind of understanding, then we actually reveal godliness in this experience. So the experience is elevated. And what's called in Chassidus, darkness is transformed into light, and bitterness is transformed into sweet. So this, these are in times of Mashiach, this 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 whole idea of transformation is going to be um, just the, at least the first part times of Mashiach will just be natural. I mean, it will be happening all the time, and this is what's going on in our times. We're in the times where we have these understandings, we have these awarenesses, and we can take. Um, a, a situation where instead of getting angry, we can work on it with our mind and our understanding of understanding that it's God working, you know, the, the puppeteer making it all work out. And we can change our shift and uh, shift our mind and shift the, the how we see things and we can make things light and good. And that is the, the time that we're in now where we're starting to see Hashem and everything. OK, and that's the concept of God will be revealed in the whole world. And also non-Jews are beginning to see also godliness in the world. It's it's very, it's completely, the world is completely different now than it was 30 years ago. There's a, a whole shift towards seeing God, God um, working within the world by many non-Jews all over the world and it's becoming more and more popular. So that's that's what he talks about here in today's Tanya. We know that in times of Mashiach, and especially then also there's a second stage of Mashiach late in uh, when the there'll be the resurrection of the dead, where it says really the whole purpose of creation, why the world was created, will be revealed in the at, at that point, and and it will be like um um it will be the, the the wholesomeness right we'll understand everything all the death that took place will be you know you know understood all the all the the reincarnations and all the Gilgolim and all the all the whatever the, our souls went through and all these all these trials and tribulations of all these many years will be clear. It won't be quite. We'll be seeing through everything, the godliness and the purpose of everything. 
Um, okay, he mentions over here something um, that actually my husband gave you a nice insight on this, where it says, um, when, in time when we were given the Torah, it says, Hashem showed us to know that Hashem who Elohim, God is Elohim. Hashem, the name yud heh vav and the He is the name Elohim. The name of yud heh vav -Ke is the name of God's revelation. God beyond limitation, God in miracles, God above the world, transcending the world. The name of Elohim is the name of God that represents God concealing himself within the world and uh, making his light a fit within the boundaries of the limitations of the world and making the world run as with the laws of nature. So it's God within the rules of nature, not above the rules of nature. So, but in the times of Harsinai, when we got the Torah, they were, they were able to see God, how he's, he's both. God is uh, both beyond the world and within the world, which was a paradox, right? So, but they were able to see it and they're able to, it says, see the sounds and um, I mean, see the, yeah, see the sounds and see what was supposed to be heard. And so what does it mean? The rabbis say, Mr. Klima, they were able to see Hashem's voice coming out saying, I am Hashem, but they were able to see the voice. So what does it mean they were able to see the sounds and see the words of God saying, I am God, your Lord? It's, um, so my husband was explaining to me, it's like, let's say you understand something so good and it's so clear, that you, it's like you see it. It's like clear, clearest day. It's like you see it. It's not like you have to, it's not like you just heard about it. So that's the concept of also in the times of Mashiach, the times of the, when we come with the teachings of Hasidus and the understandings that we've come, the awarenesses that we're being taught through the hidden dimensions of Torah, the Hasidus that we're learning here now, we're able to accept God and, and, and absorb God because we don't have these blocks of our mind or of our heart or of our misunderstandings or of our misbeliefs because we've worked through them. We've, we've absorbed godliness. So then we're able to um, accept and absorb and, and, and hear it in a way that we can actually see it. There's not, there's no, there's no, none of these blocks of our, uh, wait, doesn't make sense to me. This, I, I don't agree. We don't have these different opinions. It's all, we're in tune with, God, the way God sees things. But to be in tune with the way God sees things, we really do need to learn Hasidus and absorb it and internalize it. To really take moment by moment different ideas that come or different things that happen to us and say, wait a minute, where is God over here? And look for the for the godly, the how we're what we're telling ourselves with our mind that could be blocking God's vision. And to ask ourselves, what how does God see this moment? How does God see this experience? How does God, you know, where is God in this in this picture over here? And the more we practice that, finding God in the moment, the more we're uncovering God and revealing God and making and and that's and that then we're more of these vessels that can see what's being said and absorb it. It's like um, um, there's no blocks. That's it. We, we remove the blocks and it's we're like we're uh, we're like what's called bittel. We're, we're, and we're able to absorb within us the the revelations of God, the God consciousness that we're, we're you know we're able to absorb. So that's through Hasidus we can do that, and through internalizing the Hasidus, you know, really thinking about it and and checking ourselves, checking up on ourselves, and seeing where are we, where is our mind telling us no, 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 or where is our mind giving us a different opinion or idea, and where is through Hasidus, we can see where more God's opinion or vision or, or consciousness or awareness is. And it's unlimited because godliness is really, you know, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. It's a, it's a constant understanding and connection. And since our souls are unlimited and God is unlimited, it's a, it's a, this can go on in an unlimited way. Okay, now... Um, so in times of, of um, okay, he says, what happened after they got the Torah though? Why didn't, you know, why wasn't, wasn't Mashiach completely revealed by then? And we, you know, you know, all, you know, we got all these great awarenesses and in times of, you know, when God revealed himself at Mount Sinai, the problem was, is that they did do a sin 
afterwards, right? When Moshe didn't come back right away and they thought he was not coming back and they made the golden calf and they sinned. Now, actually, I was learning uh, this this week. God intended it for, to be this way. And the lesson from the golden calf that the rabbi says was God made it that way that they would sin in order to create a possibility that anybody who sins throughout the generations knows that you're not, you're not, um, you're not toast. <laughs> there is a purpose in the sin. And the purpose in the sin is actually for, to come to a closer connection to God through by experiencing that sin. And the, 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 the closer connection to God is through us doing teshuva, through us reconnecting with that yearning and the desire and that, and that, you know, that, that real push on our part to reconnect to Hashem. When God gave us the Torah, it was all from God, God pouring down on us revelation after revelation. But after, when we do tshuva, when we come and on our own come to Hashem, we become more partners and more close on from our initiative and from our desire and our yearning. And then we be, are able to come to a higher um, partnership and closer partnership with, with Hashem from, from, from our own initiative and our desire and our yearning. So that's that's there is a, a great thing of, of, of coming close to, to Hashem through tshuva. And we, the Rebbe many times quoted that we can do tshuva with one side and one moment. And um, and this, you know, by this, 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 this inner yearning can take a second. That's why the Rebbe kept saying, you know, when Mashiach can come in, in a minute, like in a second, it's terrifying, like in a blink of an eye. We don't have to have more things uh, first happening before Mashiach can come because everybody can have this internal shift of desire to come close of teshuva, and then that's you know they're they're in, that's it they're in. you know I just actually heard a story let me just tell you a good story that a woman just told me yesterday she was here she brought her mezuzahs and she brought her sons to fill in and her brothers to fill in and she brought her brothers mezuzahs from our state and she sat in she said to me first of all her brother was a cons is still a conservative cousin maybe maybe he was I maybe mean, I'm not sure if he still is but he for sure was a conservative cousin beautiful boys and um and but not not observant of of necessarily of of all Torah law like not necessarily focused on being an observant Jew so he one day this past Rosh Chodesh El, the first day of El, which is like in around September time he just woke up and had an epiphany and a feeling that he wants to just be like connected to God and he took upon himself all the mitzvahs <laughs> on the spot from that day on everything like <laughs> I don't think I ever heard of such a story like but like like and I met this person she, when he dropped off his film he um I got to meet him it was like it was like amazing story she and she told me another story that when she this is um if she doesn't mind, I'll tell you next week who, I'll have to ask her first if I can tell this story in her name. Um, she, she, when she was younger, she actually, she came to my parents' home. My parents used to live on Las Palmas and they used to have Rabbi Moshe Bentov. He was a Moroccan Sephardi um, rabbi who would check mezuzahs. And he had um, from his grandfather and from his father, this tradition of Kabbalah, of how to read a mezuzah, and you could see more deeply into the person's actual, like, spiritual state. So he told her uncle, this woman who was my being yesterday, from the mezuzah, from checking his mezuzah, that there's something wrong in his head, and he has to have his tefillin, you know, that you put on the head, checked. So he did, and he did have something, I guess, um, in his tefillin, she said, that we needed correction. That was not not kosher, and they fixed it. And whatever was going on in his head was fixed. So that she told me yesterday from her uncle. I don't know if this was ever printed anywhere. And I actually know Moshe Bento, the rabbi. I don't think so. Anyway, he. I remember him because he was in my parents' home checking the mezuzahs for people and telling them what a little bit more about what they need to fix based on the mezuzah. <laughs> His, uh, he should have a, an aliyah. Okay, so let's see. If there's any, let's see how the ever finishes this Tanya for today. Okay, right. He says that, okay, so the, they had the sin after the golden calf. I mean, the golden calf was the sin, meaning they were, somebody wanted me to explain a little bit more of that. 
basically they were they thought Moses wasn't coming down. He was late by day. Their calculations were that he was supposed to come down already. They thought that's it. Moses is not coming down. They don't have a leader. Um, they got impatient. They and they they created a calf that would be actually somehow um, I don't know how they thought would take care of them somehow. I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, they did. There was some there was some magic put into it. Um, yeah, according to the midrash, they put some something into it that gave the golden calf some sort of um, power other than just being a piece of calf that's gold, some sort of energy. But in any event, I, I can't go into that. What happened was, is when Moshe came down, he broke the, the tablets, right? And, but this, it says that God liked what he did. And why did he like, he said, Hashem said to Moses, good for you that you did that. Why? There was something good in it, in that it enabled them to actually correct themselves, do tshuva, reconnect to God, reaccept God from a place of desire, and more yearning, and then Moses wrote the second tablets, and it says after the second tablets, Moses was able to receive um, this beams of light that he wasn't able to get after he received the first tablets, even though the first tablets were written by God and given by God and were much uh, very high revelation. He was only able to receive these beams of light after the Jews sinned, and they did Teshuva, they returned on their own and they received the 13 attributes of mercy and they elevated themselves. So the initiative from below and the Teshuva, the yearning to come close to God out of a place of, of feeling distant and pain and, and feeling like th that stronger desire to connect, that is what enabled Moses to have these beams of light, which is higher levels of revelations of godliness that he didn't have before. And the Lubavitcher also says in 1992, that we each have a Moses within us and we all have this ability to have these rays of light shining from within us, which is um, a more of a revelation of godliness and a connection to God because of our teshuva, of our yearnings and our, our, our messing up and fixing and coming close to God from our own initiative. And that's uh, in times of Mashiach, he ends up over here. Um, everything of the sins will be fixed. Like the whole world will come to its completion. The whole our bodies and everything that we deal with in the world will be so elevated and so completely used, just absorbed with godliness, godly awareness, that we'll all be able to receive the revelations of God's light to us through the Torah, which is called power and strength. And um, it will be like a light for the for the for the nations, and all the non-Jews will also go to towards the, within this light and this awareness and understanding. And um and Hashem's glory will be revealed, and all flesh, it says, will see together that, you know, Hashem's God's presence. Okay? And so, yeah, all the nations of the world, all the people who, who are in this world will come to these godly awarenesses and consciousness because we will have an effect with our connection to God and our inner understanding and our inner awarenesses will have an effect on how we relate to the world and and it will be absorbed and, and understood by the world and by the people of the world. So that's Tanya for today. In a nutshell, in a little droplet, <laughs> enough to, I guess, put something and make a little art, meditate on it, make a little art session. And, and if anybody has a question where you can, before we meditate on it, you can ask something. If you'd like to ask something. Can I just say, wow, <laughs> me it's Stacy this Stacey. is like so on point with what's going on in my life like I'm like wow so thank you oh thank you for saying that yes it's, it is wow Hasidus is, is, is wow every time I open up yeah. a book of Hasidus I'm like wow we're so lucky <laughs> it's like miracles <laughs> revealed God's revealing himself to us I'm very you blessed know. yes <laughs> very very aligned with what's going on in my life too good 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 it's it's and that's the beauty of Hasidus it really teaches us you don't have to be on a certain level of learning of you know all the laws and everything that people have learned from when they were little if you're in that desiring place to connect to God no matter where you are and what your level of, of, of upbringing was it doesn't it doesn't it's not going to hinder you. you could always connect to God on a soul level and start 
from now, everything <laughs> is at this moment, your connection is what is what is the meaningful, that's what's going on. It's not, you're not, you're not, you are not your past. You are who you are and how you are connecting at this moment. It's called unlabeling ourselves. Hi, Perla. Who else is there? <laughs> you packed an awful lot into this class. Just yeah. want to say. Um, wait, who's speaking? I'm sorry. I'm on my phone. I can't see everybody at once. I'm not sure why. Is that was Stacy. Spoke. Who spoke? Yeah. Just okay. I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Thank you. Whoever said that. Um, okay. Um, okay. So. So should we meditate? Uh, uh, Ray, are you ready or are you still taking your notes? Yes. We're here. You still think that we're like my class? Thank you. What? All right. We have a, have a busy house going on from the other side of the door. So um, uh, let's do the the um, art uh, for the art journaling assignment first okay and then we'll go in so this was very much um about hide and seek um, right god fills the world and the world conceals god's light i'm just reviewing our world is the lowest god is completely concealed in this world why because god's pleasure is aroused when we find hashem when we find god in this low dark world so it's like we're playing hide or god is playing hide and seek and um, you think about that game, right? You, the person, you know, you know, is hiding, and then everybody runs away. And, you know, we kind of run away. When they made the golden cap, they ran away from Hutnam. And then the purpose is of, of sin is to go away closer to Hashem through Teshuva, turning to God away from our own. Right? So then everybody comes running back to uh, base you know, to uh, to God to God's own base so um let's uh draw a hide and seek in your journey or maybe draw a draw uh, draw home base whatever that looks like for you if you played hide and seek when you were a kid or just draw something that's like this place you're gonna run back to we used to what and what did you say when you were a kid? You used to say, Ali, Ali, oxen free. Right? Come and touch home base and say, Ali, Ali, oxen free. With that tremendous sense of yearning to get there and, and um, triumph when we do. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, whatever this symbol could be symbol, it could be, by the way, you don't have to be an artist to do this. You can, you know, really more about um, sort of diagramming or, or getting into that other side of the less analytical side of the brain to access a deeper truth for ourselves. So that home base could be just colors or shapes, or it could be an actual um, figure. Okay, and let's imagine that behind home base is God's perspective. So think of something in your something in your life um, or something in your situation um, where you are um, running away or not seeing God's light in that situation. And you can draw a symbol of that or you can write it uh, somewhere away from home base. And from the other side of home base, um, write or draw what that situation might be from God's perspective. Where might be um, God hiding in that situation? Our goal is not to separate ourselves from the world, but to see God in the world everywhere and in every moment. Right? So... Through Hasidus, the world will help us understand God better. And one of the ways we do that is, and what Hasidus teaches us, is God's perspective. How does God see it? So that bit of darkness, we're hiding. 
what might be the purpose of that from God's perspective? Or how could the light be revealed from that? And then how could you come closer to God through it? That connects you back. Connects you back to home base. Of course, we're not going to draw a picture of God, but we can draw a picture of home base. Or a symbol or something to represent home base and returning to it. You, you made you, you had a lot of details. Can you just sort of summarize those details again? Like yes. So there's home base. Our, our journal page there, home base, whatever that looks like to you. And then there's far away. Okay. Those two elements, home base and far away. And far away can be either um, a, 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 a dark negative situation that, or a situation that looks very dark, or it could be something that you know you should be doing and you are not, or something you're not doing according to Torah. That, and that you should be. It could be either of those things, either a, some, something negative or um, something where you feel off, not necessarily in the right balance with holiness. So then what we want to do is make the return from that far away thing back to home base. So you could draw a line, you could draw an arc or a line or something that connects the two, and you could use that line to um, write or draw a symbol of what you can do to bridge that gap. So to, again, to summarize, there's home base, there's far away, and then there's something connecting and coming back. Three elements, home base, far away, and the connection, something connecting to, to return back to home base. And if anybody has a page, if you'd like to share an insight, something from your notes, or something about home base, or something about far away, or especially something about the reconnecting, returning to home base. Okay, Stacey. Um, hold on. I'm on my phone, so I'm trying to figure out how to share. Oh, only the host can share. Can you let me share? Oh, um, yeah. A minute to figure that out. Security. It should be on the share button, I think. I'm also on the phone. They're kind of getting away. There you go. Okay, now you should be able to share. Are you sharing something that you made on your phone? No. But I oh, don't so, know. so then just hold up your uh, your page to the your camera. Uh, yeah. yeah. Got there it. Thank you. you. So this is my home face, the tree. And then this is a far away. My heart had issues. And Judaism, learning Jewish, is my way back. And this was light connecting me to God. Beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. Simple Thanks. and direct. Thank you. What did you say? Very simple and direct. Yes, that's how I roll. <laughs> that's interesting that you have a tree. 
Because the tree is, a, it's like the tree of life. Torah is called the tree yeah. of life. And we're called yeah. the tree also. So, oh, we are? Yeah, we're called Adam Etasada, the rabbis say. Man is, is like a, a symbol of a tree. Symbolize we're like a tree. There's a lot of things. Yeah. In, there's a, the whole teaching. We'll have to do it like, I, I, you may see something on Tubishvat on my Based on a YouTube channel, you might find something on it. I may have posted it. That would Beautiful. be awesome. Yeah. yeah, I channel a lot of things, so it's not surprising <laughs> that things make sense. What did you I say? Can, you have a, a strong intuition. Yes. Right. Your, your, yeah. your intuition. Wow. Yeah. It okay. got me here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Thank divine you. you and good. We're very glad. Exactly. Thank you. Um, anybody else like to share your page or your insights? There's a squirrel eating a nut right next to the tree I'm sitting near. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's awesome. Just right. of a, I had a vision of an arc on the water and I was floating out into the middle of the sea as I lost my family recently and the lights bring me back and the waves are bringing me back to the land to the closer to the land closer to the land that I need to be back at. Beautiful. Beautiful. We'll do a meditate. We'll help bring that in too. Okay. I'm gonna I'm on the phone so I can't share too well, but these are the art notes from today. This is sort of no, I, I'm doodling while she's teaching. I really encourage you to do that, too. So we see there's like, I usually find that the doodle sort of comes and represents what, I mean, I'm not thinking about it consciously, but it kind of the um, essence of the essence of the class. Where we go. Okay. Anyone else before we head into the next? Okay, so I'll, I'll do, I, it's interesting, Stacy had, was it Stacy who had water? Who was it who had water? I also had I water. What? Do you see me? Yeah. yeah. So so when you said about the, the trials or the cover, I had water, so I had water coming down. And then when you said go back up, so I made the water go back up. So, so the, And then as I was drawing, what came to me was like the water's going down and then flowing up and coming down and then flowing up. <laughs> so it's like, right? What we were learning today was the descent and then you go up even higher than it was where you started. The water started here, went down and then went all the way back up. And that's the heart center in the middle. That's where you said we started. <laughs> so Stacy liked that. It's also water. We connected. <laughs> the same idea or same. I had the heart too in the middle. So I enjoyed the flow of making the water go down and then go all the way back up higher and down and all the way back up higher. That's what I got from the class. <laughs> Swoosh, swishing. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now we want to kind of bring Thank that you. really through that in through meditation. Um, okay, so take a deep breath in. Breathe in, breathe out, and when you breathe in, 
breathe in that wonderful breath of life directly from Hashem, breathing it into you right now in this moment, enlivening you, relaxing you, invigorating you. And breathe out anything that does not feel like fresh blood. Let it go. Take a deep breath in. Visualize God breathing your soul in you, fresh and brand new. Our connection in every soul. Filled with infinite possibilities and infinite love. And breathe out and release and not feel like infinite possibilities. Love, just let it go. And again, breathe that love that has finished her. Even though we can't see him in this world, he's breathing himself into us from his innermost place to our innermost place, as the Alter Rebbe tells us in the And breathe out and breathe away anything that, like, or isolation, just let it go. Mm -hmm. And breathe in again, that every breath, the openness, breathe it out. And if you feel any more distance, any distancing you from Hashem, just breathe in again that infinite And follow it back. Follow Hashem's infinite breath back your when you exhale. Mm. This beautiful loop going of connecting to Hashem breath. And just know that Hashem forgives you and loves you and trusts you. And is so proud of you for every bit of effort and struggle and every bit of yearning that you have to arouse God's pleasure with your embracing of his bath. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Ray. So um, what I got from this meditation, I was trying to focus on one thing that I could you know, tune into that is maybe that the water, the raging water that's dragging me down and that I'm elevating. That's for me, that's um, worry. I get worried. <laughs> so worry, my epiphany was worry, right, is when I'm using my own mind to block what Hashem's vision is. I'm using my rationalizations or the way I see things or understand things the way they're supposed to be, right? And that's the block. And that's that's the worry. The worry is based on the way I'm see, perceiving things rather than the way God is seeing things. So if I let go, that's my bitzel, that's my opening, right? That's my surrender. Then I let go of the worry and I'm letting, right? Letting God's wave and vision and reality and existence come through me. So thank you, A. Yeah. And yeah. Thank you. I, I also, it was uh, very, um, I don't know why, but it kind of was very moving for me because I, I had a thought that I hadn't, uh, that wasn't in my mind for many, many years. And it was um, an act of uh, tremendous kindness that one of my classmates from um, elementary school uh, did for mm -hmm. me. Um, and it was uh, it was uh, quite beautiful. And I actually drew a picture of the she she used to sit in back of me, and and I drew a picture of our desks and and the two of us um, uh, uh, together there. And um, it, so I thank you for that um, memory, so bringing that to me. So because it beautiful. was very very nice. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Great. It was beautiful. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Shem. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to do the nigun again. Um, the words of the nigun that I sang, uh, or I'm going to sing are, um, 
you are my God and I will thank you. And you are my God in two levels, there's two different names of God. Um, and I will exalt you. So here we go. Um, I'm just gonna turn off the recording here.